Hello everyone. Welcome to Homemaking Radio and I hope you get a few things done while you listen to some of my observations and that whatever your circumstances is, that you're doing well and that you have great plans for improvement. And of course, I am uncommonly well because at least I'm here. I'm not sure I have anything in order to talk to you about, so I'm going to stick to my three subjects, and that's getting ready, your appearance, your homemaking in general, and uh, we might talk about a few other issues that may present themselves in your lives at home. I'm Lydia Ruth, and I am broadcasting from the Ocean Room in the mess. Uh, my descendants, the children, love to staying in this room. And they think they are at the beach. So that is something accomplished. Now, I want to start out today by saying that I would appreciate it if you would not watch this on YouTube, that we would click the link that I provided for you in the description box just under the video and go to the blog where I have it down at the end of the post, the current post. And this is a video I've made myself on my own device, and there won't be any ads on it if you'll go to my blog to listen to it. Plus, you get to see the other things that I described and some links that maybe I have spoken of, and just the whole picture. And also, you get to make a comment there and see what other people are saying. And if you do make a comment, it's really important because other people will come and say, oh, this is how this person thinks about this, and this is maybe a better approach to homemaking, or maybe you want to put your reaction to what I'm saying on there and add something that uh, you've experienced or you believe, and it's really important for other people to see that. And so I want to start out today with the usual. You're probably getting tired of hearing it, and I wonder sometimes if that could ever dredge up any more ways to say get dressed and look your best. So this week I devised something new for myself and that is I have declared it dress up for your home week. I'm going to try to be really dressy all week and not leave my room or leave the bathroom bathroom until I'm fully dressed and not go past that kitchen. Because what's happening to a lot of people, most people will complain about this, is they go downstairs or they go in their room maybe uh, you have to go through the kitchen. Some of these older homes, you have to go through the kitchen to get to the bathroom, or and you just can't ignore it, you know. Um, maybe other people were up later than you, and you decide you're going to fool around in the kitchen and fix it up, and you just can't get out of there, or you want to make yourself something to drink. And that's one reason I've had these little uh, coffee tea stations around. Great big tray. I'll just get a tray, maybe the lid off of one of those totes that's plastic, you know. Turn it the other way and load up the... Uh, the automatic shutoff kettle and all the different kinds of teas and some cups and I'll put one of these in each room so people won't have to go to the kitchen they won't have to kind of bottleneck up there or maybe they're still in their uh, sleeping clothes and they just don't want to walk around in that but they still want to start their morning out with uh, some kind of beverage so that's why I do that and then that people have more privacy some people just like to take a little longer to wake up, don't want to start talking, don't want to see other people, and even in a family, just just like to be slower, a little slower, and uh, get themselves in the mood to, to get up and get going. And so I, I want to start out with your appearance to prevent you from going into uh, any of the common rooms uh, with with your uh, with your sleeping clothes. And I'll preface this by saying how important it is to dress for your home because it, it does trigger something in your mind. And when you slough around in your slippers and your pajamas and your old robe, you're giving your mind the message that we're just going to lay around now for a while. We're just going to, you know, be super casual. And, and that's nice for the home. But if you're a homemaker, that would be nice, you know, if you were not home except on weekends. And yes, I would understand it then, but a homemaker uh, is going to have to overcome that because she's going to be home every day. And I have uh, been looking all over YouTube and I typed in, I typed in um, the importance of clothing. 
and the effect of clothing on your uh, on your mind or on your work or something. And there are just hundreds of these videos people are coming up with. A lot of them are very young people uh, on the testifying to the importance of clothing and uh, because it has been so neglected. And uh, there was one that said, "How did we get from this?" Uh, and she showed a picture of you know maybe. 100 years ago to this and then she showed a picture of what you know people are wearing and there was another man that I thought was extremely interesting and could I find it again no I don't know if it got taken off or is hidden or what it's not in my history but I really enjoyed his talk and he was young and he said he had a scientific approach to it and he showed how the things that you wear affect uh, how you do things. And for example, he started by saying if you uh, need to sleep, you would put on special sleeping clothes because you're giving your mind the signal that now it's time to sleep. And I was also talking to one of my children who said he had observed, all my children are approaching 50 now, and he had observed, and I'm going to out live them. <laughs> I'm going to outsmart them and I'm going to outdo them and um, I keep waiting though for it to happen. <laughs> I can't get here because I've got it in my mind that I have to be smarter, younger, and thinner and it never turns out that way. In fact, it's always the opposite. And um, so I gained 10 more pounds before I could come back. <laughs> and anyway, he was telling me that he works around people of the younger generations and he said that there are children that don't know that there's a bedtime and a getting up time and a, just a, a difference between different parts of the day and because you know generally uh, the clothes we wear are just as suitable for wearing to bed as they are for wearing out and uh, because you know they're all made of the same stuff they're all structured the same way and uh, so this man was talking about clothing and I know I have been vilified and criticized for saying things about about people's clothing and saying I'm judgmental they'll say you're judgmental and you're conceited and and if you are teaching a home school you can't neglect this kind of thing because home school is also about character preparing uh, children to be uh, adults who are non-offensive and and uh, able to focus on their work and and to be appropriate and so this man was saying a lot of the things that I kind of thought maybe were, were true uh, he said that if you will dress for let's say a certain job you're doing and you'll dress for it uh, your mind is leaps and bounds ahead of you and you will ace out the job you just do it uh, also so much more willingly and he had a, a real scientific approach to it. I hope that I can find that and include the link. And there were a lot of people talking about the importance of clothing. And uh, there were several women that were and, and men that did uh, videos on modest clothing and how it gives you power and how uh, how it is it is more uh, stabilizing than you know not caring. And so for homemaking, you know, this is my week for uh, dressing up for the home. And for homemaking, give yourself a chance to try a little experiment. Just like, was who was it that said, I think I shall try a little experiment on the captain. <laughs> was it Mrs. Jennings in uh, Sense and Sensibility? Um, or Colonel, the Colonel, Colonel Brandon. Remember that? I think I shall try a little experiment on the Colonel. Uh, try a little experiment on yourself. And let's dress up every day. It's just for a few hours. You don't have to keep it on all day. But find something really nice in your closet. Dress up in it. And begin your your homemaking and, and all the things that you do at home. And, you know, you can wear, when I say apron, I mean a whole apron that starts up here. You know, not just one of those little things that ties around your waist. Because where you're going to get the flour and the water and, and the dirt from the garden is, is right in this area. So you need to cover that up. And you could also get yourself a little apron wardrobe if you didn't want to make one. You could just get your apron wardrobe 
quite inexpensively in some of the, the big box stores. And I know Hobby Lobby has aprons and often 50% off. Walmart has aprons. Get yourself an apron wardrobe for one week. We used to in the olden days. I know you object to me saying that so much, which you'll be saying it one day too. Uh, and I know people make fun of me for saying that, but we used to have an apron that had the day of the week embroidered on it. And that way you would have a fresh apron every day. And we didn't wear the same apron day in and day out and not wash it. And so you can cover your stuff with aprons, but just test it out to see if your family's mood changes or if, if there's a little more peace and stability in your home. Just test it out. And if you are still not convinced that you can wear uh, skirts and long dresses, when I say skirts and dresses, I mean long ones, you know, s stuff that, that covers you. Um, a lot of people will tell me, well, I tried wearing a dress, but it was so cold. If you have a long dress on, you're not going to get cold, or it's, it was too this or too that. Uh, and of course, there you can wear your jeans and leggings under them. And uh, if you have not uh, tried that or tried wearing your really nice clothes, try it. I know that there's a time we have to save those things in case we ever get called out to do something fancy, but I probably am not at this stage going to use them, so I am going to wear them at home. And then take notes of your mood, take notes of your accomplishments, take notes of your thoughts, take notes of other people around you, your home, your family, take notes of any progress you've made in your home or anything different. And uh, so it's, it's dress, dressing up at home week. I might be able to motivate myself to come uh, here and more often if I did that. Now. It's also love your home week, okay? So we, we always make up our own holidays, and we make up our own stuff. And I have a few things that I like to do in a ritual before I face everybody, so it's really easy when you get vital to get up before everyone else. It just happens automatically. As soon as the blue light comes in in the morning from outside, I took a picture of it this morning, and I will show it to you. Jane Austen talked about the blue light, the natural blue light, and uh, just before sunrise. And uh, I, I, my little ritual is, of course, I like to get ready and get dressed and get my uh, hair and face on <laughs> and uh, so I won't scare anybody or so I'll recognize myself and uh, go outside. And I like to get the fresh, crisp, cool morning air because I think it sets my hair <laughs> or something. I don't know. I've convinced myself it's, it's probably good for my skin. And and then, of course, there's prayer. And I would suggest, you know, ladies, it's real easy to get caught up in praying for everything in the whole world. But how much time do you have? And how many loved ones do you have that, that, that no one else will probably ever pray for? Children, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents, etc. Uh, and for yourself, too. So stick to your own family for a while because that keeps them out of trouble <laughs> and and remember was it John Knox or uh, Queen Elizabeth the first that I fear the prayers of John Knox more than an army of 10,000 or something like that because she knew that if he prayed a righteous prayer uh, it probably would be answered and um, so I don't have a really smooth script today but if you've got something to do and you need to go do it I I hope you will do that and not to stay here I don't think I have much to show you um, so today uh, is the beginning of um, dress for your home and love your home week so now I want to say that that dressing well and dressing up at home and getting ready for the day is so important I think it's more important, and then after that, uh, there are other things. Have your morning tea or coffee or whatever you have. Make your list. Sit down and make your list. Uh, pray, like I suggested. And uh, the other thing 
I think was a few exercises. I have been checking on different kinds of exercises for different kinds of pain or stiffness. And I, I go to YouTube and I look them up to see who I like. And I like to try different things. And um, I don't know if you remember this. It was from uh, both It was from both Man and Demand and Christian Charm Course. It was for teenage children and the homeschoolers liked it. But it was in print when I was, when I was a teenager. That was in print. So it just shows you. Um, how durable it was and um, how timely. Uh, but I, I photographed the, the set of exercises and put it in a little plastic page here. And I wanted to know if you remember, because in all the exercises that I explore, stretches and um, I, ha I like to look up what morning, uh, morning stretches would be like and see what different people are, are teaching. And uh, it's like going to class, and we all like for people to take care of us, and we've been taught to enjoy, you know, going to something. So I go to my little room back there, and I'll have an exercise class, and I'll make a schedule for myself. And it's usually all these things, like making a list, getting dressed, having tea, having prayer, uh, and exercising. And I noticed something is that many of the exercises are basic to, to these. And uh, they may just be variations of all these, but I wanted to know if any of you remembered this one. I can do all these exercises except this one. Do any of you remember it was called the bicycle? Do you remember when we were little kids and you could lay down on the floor and do the bicycle and hoist yourself up uh, underneath and, and bicycle your, uh, your legs? Well, I can't do that one. But I thought if I could learn to skip, which I have, I've just relearned it, learn to skip and to jump and to uh, sit on my knees, which I couldn't for, for decades. I didn't even think of it. But I started to limber up a little bit with some of these stretches. I'm wondering if one day I'll be able to do that again. And I wondered if you, any of you remembered it. I don't think I remembered to, for some reason, it was kind of, I don't know. It seems like when um, the schools took over exercises, a lot of things changed. Now, I was going through uh, some of these some of these books and wondering what they had spoken of about dressing. And one of the things that was prominent uh, back in the day was that there were certain clothing for certain occasions. And now, of course, uh, I don't know if anyone thinks about that, but honestly, I can remember when we uh, would find something special to wear to visit someone. And this is what I'm going to wear. Or we would tell our brother or sister or somebody, oh, this is what I'm going to wear to so-and-so's, you know, whatever. And also, uh, if we were going to go shopping, people would dress up. And I very keenly remember the first time, and it was back in the 19, early 1980s, someone told me uh, that when she uh, went shopping, she went super casual. And we had not done that before that because we had so much respect. We did not want to be turned away from a, uh, a shop. You had to be respect, respectfully dressed to, to enter into a shop. I mean, they wouldn't throw you out or anything. They just might refuse service to you. Um, but we actually had clothing that we looked forward to. We're going to go on a shopping trip. And I grew up on a homestead in Alaska. So once a year we went to Anchorage to the shops and we dressed up to go there, to go into any of those shops um, because it showed respect to them and they were going to um, wait on you and take care of your needs and serve you and it was the least you could do was to look nice when you entered a shop because it showed um, it showed that you appreciated it and how would you feel you know if you invited someone over and they came all smelly and um, they hadn't changed their clothes in days and they hadn't washed and they and they just walked in there and they were going to sit at your fine table and you're going to serve them tea. Um, I would go ahead and do it, but it wouldn't be appreciated. You know, I thought at least they could, you know, at least they could show a little bit of appreciation for what they were invited to. And so we would dress up to go to the shops 
And of course, we only had this once a year in a summer um, type of shopping, and it was really important to us. And we also would go to the county fair at the same time. And, um, and, and these were really important to us. I have pictures that my parents took of us at some of these uh, places, and every one of the seven children and, and the parents were all dressed up. And what were we doing? We're going to the county fair. We're going to go to the um, shopping areas. And they would shop for enough food to, to store all winter. We'd buy clothes. We'd, uh, it was just amazingly wonderful. And we dressed up for it. And so when I look at a page like this from Christian Charm Course, that this old one is the better copy uh, that, with the red cover. Uh, the new one, new edition, I didn't care for. Um, and it was what to wear uh, when. And I'm trying to find the page. Oh, and it was... Um, here are uh, some examples of drawings of different kinds of clothing. And, you know, you could adapt it for this era here. And this one in particular is how can I look well-dressed. If you put that in a, a newsletter or made your own publication or even did a blog on it, you're going to get a lot of hatred because there's just been such a dumbing down of dressing that even at home you feel self-conscious if you're dressed up or if you wear your jewelry or if you put a bow in your hair or anything like that, that someone's going to mock you. It's just really terrible, isn't it? But we have got to bring uh, our culture back and we'll start in the home, okay? This was called How Can I Look Well-Dressed? And what it did is it divided it into formal uh, church and daily, you know, daily wear. And, um, and it just showed, you know, how to mend things, how to sew a button on and things like that. And, in the, and it was for the occasion. And so I encouraged my children when we were homeschooling, Let's get a notebook out and write down every occasion you think that you might need to have some kind of clothing for, even if it's at home. Well, there's mourning. Remember the Victorians, and I'll read to you a little bit about uh, that in Linda Lichter's book. Um, Victorians had their mourning dress, and you can find patterns for this called the mourning dress. And then they had their evening dress, and their, you know they would dress for dinner. And remember... Um, in Wives and Daughters, Osborne said, I dress for dinner because Mama likes it. <laughs> and and even and they were farmers. And uh, we've lost, we've just really lost something, but I think the culture can be taken back with the home. So in the Man and Demand book, they also had uh, ideas for young men uh, and they would draw pictures of it, you know, how to combine clothing, how, how not to, not, how not to dress. And um, yet, yet, as the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s progressed, people would uh, say that you're conceited if you cared about things like that. And, and the young men uh, became increasingly uncomfortable if they were dressed a little bit, you know, more formally. So... Uh, I want to show you that just to show you that there was a time when people cared. And Linda Lichter had a picture in this book. And I'm still talking about dressing for the home. And I just wanted you to test it out. Get your, make yourself a little tiny notebook and write down your reactions. How, how did you feel? What was your mood? Um, how, did you, uh, how did you look at life? How did you look at your home? What kind of... Uh, what kind of ambition did it give you? This one video that I saw that I could never find again talked about how clothing can motivate you and give you ambition to do something if you're dressed for that activity. And uh, she had a picture in here, and it's of the Victorians walking on the street at Coney Island. Now, let me just read the caption. Strollers on the Coney Island boardwalk on a summer day in 1897 show a sensibility about public dress and decorum that is in stark contrast in the modern era. Now, they don't look like they're particularly uncomfortable. 
and they don't look irritated or um, stressed and uh, and there are no paper cups on the sidewalk <laughs> there but um, she talked about dress in here as a form of self um, I guess self-control or you know like a more like a, a confidence and uh, and that's interesting and there was one lady that had a video when I was looking this up on YouTube you know the importance of, of clothing the importance of dressing well she had a video called something like what remember when clothing used to make you feel so good I'm wondering too if it's also the fabrics and uh, there's more uh, petroleum in the fabrics now and there's more there's more other things and uh, but yes clothing could transform you almost if you made a new dress you just felt almost transformed into a different uh, world of it made you feel vacation like or it made you feel like it was spring or it made you everything had uh, an atmosphere to it and so I want to move on from clothing but I'd like you to test yourself out if you could I'm going to do it this week and this is called dressing for the home week for me and love your home too and uh, so I want to go on to homemaking because I had a few things I wanted to talk to you about and it included it included uh, character because character as I read to you from another book a long time ago that homemaking is a matter of character and you can go and look at all these things and read all these books about how to do things properly but if you're irritated by it or you don't have your heart into it there's a character problem and a lot of people have asked me to talk about marriage but I didn't want to because everybody has their own you know uh, their own relationship and you can't fix things you don't know about but I would say that it is a matter of character and if you start with the uh, the first Corinthians 13 chapter love is patient love is kind and it does not um, uh, laugh at, at the failure of others and it does not uh, it's not selfish and all this stuff you start looking at that those are character qualities and uh, so it doesn't matter how much romance you can put into a marriage I mean you can get uh, a fancy dinner and you can get flowers and you can get uh, jewelry and all that stuff but it doesn't cover up bad character so they need to go back and study the words in first corinthians 13 and ask how can i be patient how can i be kind um how can i be uh less selfish and and more often than not a lot of the problems in marriage come from character problems and you can take courses you can even study things uh, that help that help your marriage and people will change for a time but then they'll miss their old selves and if they're used to manipulating and they're used to uh, running you down and they're used to um, that that's part of, becomes part of their personality and they they miss their old selves they are not comfortable with this with a new type of life and they didn't change their you can change uh, marriage problems many times but if the basic basic character flaws are not corrected and studied and prayed on and uh, improved on and if they don't want to then you just have, kind of have to work around those kind of people and fortunately for all of us most of us have uh, uh, got people like our children that we can train to be to do better than that and speaking of to better I was talking to a friend of mine that she said she used to really kick herself because she made so many mistakes and many of us at a vital age <laughs> if we spend too much time alone that's all we think about is if I had to do it over again <laughs> we hear that all the time well what she decided she would do she said I didn't uh, you know I didn't teach my children this or that and uh, and, and half of the time they went to public school before I learned about homeschool and different things and she was just kind of regretting it and then one day she said you know what I am just going to do better she said when I know better I can do better and so she said even though uh, so that way when her girls were growing up and saying well mom 
you went to all the school dances and you wore short skirts and you uh, you did this and you did that. Now you're telling us we can't do it. And she said, well, I didn't know better. And now that I know better, I can do better. And that is such a beautiful, perfect uh, answer. I decided to adopt it. I love it. Uh, now that I know better, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of repentance. When you, you judge on who you are now, not who you are were then. And if you know better, then you do better. I'm trying to find out uh, if I had actually written that phrase down and what she had said. Okay, so I have other things to say about homemaking that you might be interested in. And one was, if you're going to uh, be a homemaker and you don't have confidence in your homemaking or someone in your family is mocking it or they don't have confidence in you as a homemaker, uh, the first thing you've got to stop doing is devaluing yourself. Now, this is all from uh, business and shopkeepers language. Don't devalue the product. Don't say, oh, I'm such a klutz. I'm such a bad cook. Oh, I can't do anything right. Or uh, I just can't keep up with my house. Don't say it. Maybe it's true. But just don't say it because it puts uh, things into the minds of immature people who may uh, throw it in your face, turn it on you, uh, or lose respect for you, or just not uh, show proper respect. And I'm not saying that, you know, as homemakers, we go around wanting respect or expecting respect. But we don't want to give anyone an excuse to abuse us or trample on us in some way. I'm talking about, you know, metaphorically. Um, so don't devalue the product. Don't say, I'm just, I just never was a good at this or good at that. I can't sew. Don't say that. Maybe you can't sew, but you don't want to eliminate it altogether because maybe someday you will sew. Who knows? Don't say, I can't. Um, and then... Uh, especially in front of your children because they will conclude that their mother is inferior and that uh, maybe somebody else would be better. So when you know better, you do better. And so in the meantime, keep your mouth shut about all your flaws. I know we all came from a generation, those of us who are vital now, that, want, that encouraged us to tell all. And I remember the first time I heard that and I was so embarrassed. And I was a teenager and I was invited to a youth get together from a church and it wasn't the church I belonged to but it, since it was uh, a party my parents let us go and one of the things they did was they asked everyone to go around and introduce themselves and tell something about themselves well when it came to me I just knew my name and I didn't know what to say about myself because I didn't know this technique and this technique was you go around and as listening to other people I found out what it was you, you tell about, they were telling things, uh, about things they liked or didn't like and that sort of thing, but it got into more personal uh, revelations and became very, very uncomfortable. So do not devalue the product. Do not diminish yourself in the eyes of your family or others. You don't have to tell them all your flaws. And when you know better, you do better. And if they say, yeah, but I saw your yearbook picture and you had one of these uh, short hairstyles that looked like a man or something like that, you say, well, when I knew, knew better, I did better. That's all you have to say. And, uh, you know, you don't identify yourself with your past, but with your present. And the other thing was, and I told you this is from um, shops and stores, don't lose the sale. Now, I have told my grandchildren when they come into a room and, uh, they are like in the morning and they're not bathed and dressed and their shirts not buttoned right and they want a cup of, cup of something to drink uh, and their hair is not combed i said first thing i'll say is don't lose the sale you get around a young lady and you're interested in her or she might be interested in her don't lose the sale with your bad appearance and that's the same in the home don't lose your sale look confident dress well and do go to YouTube and type in what I had suggested was uh, the importance of clothing or the importance of, of uh, what you wear at home or the importance of or how clothing affects your mind or whatever. You'll run into a lot of things maybe you won't want to listen to, but there'll be a few good ones that you'll really like. And there are some women there that do a wonderful job on modest clothing and a few men that do channels on 
how important modest clothing is and what it does to the mind and and also how it affects other people so don't devalue or diminish your the product and the second one is don't lose the sale if you want to do better in life you have to act better dress better learn to speak better otherwise you're going to lose the sale and you know what that means that means you're uh, let's say you are uh, in a you are running a store and it's a private little private enterprise and and you want to sell your product you don't start telling showing them where the flaws are on this product or how it won't work or how you can get a better deal at somebody else's store uh, you keep your mouth shut <laughs> it's not to say that you're dishonest but it's the same with your personal appearance both both young men and young women don't lose the sale uh, I think that is that is so important and also remember who you represent and what you represent uh, you represent your family uh, and don't don't bring um, shame into your mother <laughs> don't be shaming your mother <laughs> and uh, because in the olden days people used to think well look at him he doesn't even know how to button his shirt what kind of mother does he have and we the mother got blamed so the mothers uh, were always saying don't be shaming your mother you know keep your shirt buttoned up and your shirt tucked in and wear a belt and uh, comb your hair and and uh, always do you know when we were little we had to go and wash our face and hands before we ate before we sat to the table and and our parents would send us way back to get ready and you had to comb your hair too and this was in a crude homestead life you know on a on a birch table that my father built and but we had more propriety there than we do now okay and the other one was uh, don't give away the store have you heard that one that means uh, don't tell everybody all your plans and you can get in on some of these uh, Christian devotionals online on YouTube that are very good and one of them that I, I heard that was just so good it was talking about uh, why God wants us to be quieter about things you don't tell everybody everything you don't tell everybody how something is made or how where you got it and how you got it on sale and just keep quiet if someone says they like something in your home or that you're wearing just say thank you that's all you have to do and we got into where we were excusing ourselves you know if someone liked something we would say oh yeah thank you well you know it didn't cost me anything somebody gave it to you know <laughs> and just say thank you and move on uh, don't lose the sale because you're diminishing um, you're diminishing something so and that's the best I know how to explain that when you lose the sale uh, you talk too much and we learned this in sales meetings years ago when we were in a business was if you talk too much and you try to push it and oversell it you can lose the sale and so as a homemaker you don't need to get up and say today I'm going to make bread and I'm going to do this or that now if your if your children ask you you can tell them you can have show them your list um, you know I'm going to attempt to do this but don't go say oh I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that because uh, it it may make it may not work that way and then people lose confidence in you and then they say well you said you were going to make this or make that so you've got to be really watch what you say at home and learn to be quiet you know the Word of God says learn to be quiet and to work with your own hands and to mind your own business everybody needs to do that um, so rising above past mistakes you don't have to beat yourself up all the time you can uh, do better and that's a sign of of your own uh, that's a sign of your own the ch own change in your life now one of the things if I want to go back to clothing is that we used to do I had had it in my notes and didn't see it was uh, clothing was so integral to our sense of well-being and uh, I don't know there was a, a, a personal feeling that we belonged and that we were loved by God it has something to do with clothing that we would lay out our clothes and all our things for the next morning and then 
Then in the morning, when we changed out of our sleeping clothes, those would get laid out again, and the bed would get made, and they'd be, you know, usually under our pillow or something like that. But clothing was extremely important, but people got too busy rushing us. Um, back in the 60s, it was, you know, hurry up, don't fuss over things, and, uh, uh, and people started throwing uh, stuff in piles and then covering the pile up with a sheet or a towel uh, when someone came over because... We were encouraged not to think about it. And rushing makes you not to think. So, um, so think about that for a little bit while you get something done. Now, I was talking about homeschooling. And even if you're not homeschooling, you need to, you need to be autodidactic, self-taught, and school yourself. Uh, you can take courses and things, but... It's hard to find something that really benefit you at home. I think I particularly think that character uh, studies would benefit you the most. You know, learning to be kind and patient and loving and forgiving and uh, and remember, I used to read this to you quite a bit. It was uh, make every effort to supplement and meaning add to your faith uh, with virtue and to virtue with knowledge and to knowledge self control and to self-control, add steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, and it says, he who lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind. You know, uh, you have friends that maybe in 30 years haven't changed at all. They're loudmouthed and they're uh, opinionated and and they're contradictory and absolutely no benefit at all. They never have anything uh, edifying. To, remember, edifying means to build up. And they never have anything edifying to say. They just wait till you say, say something and then they knock it down. Well, I was thinking about something the other day when I was... Uh, cleaning house, I ran across this little jar of charcoal, and it was open, and I remembered that I had put activated charcoal around in different places in the house to kind of purify the air. Now, this, this kind of charcoal is made with uh, corn husks and coconut and uh, made into a charcoal. It's not the same as the charcoal in your barbecue, so don't forget that. You can also look this up. It can be your assignment, and it's called activated. So I got to thinking about that while I was cleaning all this up and I had found this little jar of charcoal and what all can be done with it because uh, you can buy charcoal toothpaste, you can buy a face mask that's charcoal, and there's many other things you can do with this activated charcoal. But I got curious about the word activated. Well, activated means that you add something to it or you do something to it that makes it effective, that makes it work. Now, let's, let's just back up a little bit, and I'll show you a couple of examples. If you have uh, an unactive military, and you want to activate it, you deploy it. You send it out, and then they do all their routines and all the things that they're supposed to do. If you have a, let's say you have a debit card that, or a business card that comes in the mail, they'll text you constantly and say, have you activated your card? That means you have to go and phone the number and... They might ask you a question or something, and then they'll say, your card has been activated, so now it works. Let me see if I wrote down what it means. It means to activate, means to trigger it, to start it, and to set it in motion. So I got to thinking about how everyone's so concerned, especially in uh, homeschooling, religious circles, they want their children to memorize vast amounts of scriptures. That absolutely does not do any good unless you activate it. So choose, be simple, choose one scripture. Uh, like, I will walk within my house in a perfect way or something, and explain it and teach them how to activate it. It just means be peaceful. It means uh, be mindful, uh, be appreciative, be careful. It just means carefulness. And teach them how to activate something like um, joy. Okay, what does it mean to be joyful? And you'll have to teach them how to activate it or be kind. 
And to me, it would be easier to activate uh, the teaching of kindness by showing a little brother or sister that needs help or that is uh, that is frustrated with something and and uh, and to help your parents and to help that's kindness and how to be kind uh, is not to be selfish and that sort of thing so I was reading this verse to you add make every effort to supplement add to your faith with virtue okay they're activating it so you can learn about uh, virtue and virtue means the practice of goodness something is you know they say by virtue of by strength of is what it means and like for instance uh, you find a, a, an old chair and you test it out you want to buy this old antique chair and it it has to have a virtue of being solid you know not wobbly or not broken down and so virtue is the practice is strength and the practice of goodness so it says add to your faith virtue so you have to have faith first and then virtue and uh, so you put the virtue in it the practice of goodness to your faith and it activates it <laughs> okay and then take that virtue uh, and put knowledge with add to it knowledge well that's interesting and I've explained this to you before if you start with knowledge everybody just is brainy and knowledgeable but they don't have uh, faith or goodness to go with it it's just knowledge it's like emptiness um, empty knowledge so it, it's activated knowledge activates virtue and self-control activates knowledge and knowledge activates self-control so those things go together uh, you can have a lot of as the scriptures say you can have a lot of knowledge but if you don't have love uh, it's just a bunch of noise so it says so if you want this I will type it in uh, on the blog page and you can look it up and analyze it yourself because I believe in that word activate well like you know you've got yeast at home uh, and you want to bake some bread you're gonna to have to add something to that yeast to activate it make it you know active and um, and so to activate like activated charcoal it has to have gone through a process it's usually when you activate something it requires heat now that's interesting isn't it because the Bible also says that uh, character is produced by endurance and uh, anything that's hard you know is considered um, like you can uh, apply your pl you're applying uh, something to it you have to add something to it to make it active and so you can't just sit there as homeschoolers and say oh my kids they memorize the whole chapter of Proverbs 16 or something like that and I just look at them blankly because did you teach them how to activate it did you teach them how to use it like one of my favorite scriptures that I always liked with the children and they always got a kick out of it was do not uh, that a fool takes a dog by its ears and what that meant was the dog is not bothering anybody he's sleeping on the porch and you go and pick him up by the ears he's gonna screech and howl he might even bite you so leave him alone and this is what I always tell people if somebody in the family if the children aren't if the other children the brothers and sisters aren't bothering anybody leave them alone don't go grab something out of their hand and and don't make them scream and just leave them alone and they loved that scripture uh, and I always <laughs> enjoyed uh, Agatha Christie's character Poirot how do you pronounce it Poirot goodness tell me how you pronounce that he uh, he said uh, don't take the sleepy dog uh, don't take the sleepy dog by the ears <laughs> but it's the same thing you know don't uh, aggravate people with and leave them alone and uh, so that is a problem with uh, many things any many problems that we have is that if someone is content to be quiet mind their own business leave them alone and uh, and I would say that's a good thing for marriage too if your husband is quiet and he's happy and he's not bothering anybody just leave him alone 
and let him, you know, if he maybe he's not dynamic and maybe he doesn't want to be too involved with the homeschooling and everything, just leave him alone because then you won't have two people um, trying to decide how you're going to do things and you're just better off not having any conflict. And so uh, that's just my opinion and that's just my observation uh, of how people do things and how other people do things. And so I wanted to make one more comment about uh, cooking and homemaking and that everything, and that is that it's so important these days to do your best for your children and for your family. Now, I love uh, the cooking books, and I, I love to look at them, and I read them, and don't, but I don't always follow them. But whenever someone's here, one of the descendants is here, sometimes we will take uh, a course in one of these and just try everything in them just just because they're here and and just because we can <laughs> and you have to be careful that you don't put yourself under a lot of stress and pressure from it and especially entertaining books entertaining cookbook that can really uh, I would say limit that this to your own family just try it off on your own family don't try to entertain other people entertain your own family and teach your children how to entertain you and each other and then when you have an anniversary the children get the tables all ready they plan the menu uh, and they make the dinner and uh, then they we take pictures and they become part of your anniversary celebration I never thought it was necessary to go out because uh, we had our own little society there and enjoyed it and um, I wanted the children to know what it was like you know to eat out so we just created our own eating out and lots of people this year pressured me to tell them, I don't know why, they were so curious. Did your husband, um, what does he do for you for Valentine's Day? We don't, uh, we've reached the stage in life where our best present is for us to be calm and not spend money and put a little more money away in case we need to help our children. Uh, and, and so they won't have to take care of us. And uh, so that we don't have to be a burden on anyone. So we're careful about that. And if we wanted to do something for one another, uh, he likes for me to cook for him. And I like for him to run errands for me. Uh, I like him to go get the stuff. <laughs> and uh, let's see, there's several other things that I like. I like him to fix things. I like him to put things together for me. And uh, if I were to spend money, I'd buy myself a little chair or a little table or something like that and uh, we live in the country and we have foliage and flowers outside all over so to me uh, spending money on a, a bouquet on Valentine's Day does it doesn't appeal to me at all and I don't want candy and uh, what am I gonna do with uh, with jewelry so um, so that's that's pretty much what we do is uh, we're just nice to each other <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he doesn't uh, come into my sewing room and tell me what to do with my sewing, which sewing inspires me. I love it. I love the fabric. I love the creativity. I like the feeling that uh, I'm just creating a new atmosphere with a, a summer dress with daisies on it. You know, we're out in a field, and I like to make clothing that kind of goes with the atmosphere, with the era, or I try different costume-type styles, and... Um, and he likes to do his uh, newsletter, which he sends out every month. And he likes to type out um, the weekly uh, church bulletin. And he does all that himself. He uh, he has other things that he likes to do. He likes to get on the tractor and cut uh, all this uh, expanse of grass around the manse. He likes to repair things outside. He likes to trim the bushes. And so we just kind of leave each other alone and, and let, and he was always more able to concentrate if somebody wasn't around yammering at him. So he just does better uh, that way. And, um, and we're happy now. So, but if you want to do that, you know, if you want to, um, and it's thoughtful, you know, if someone wants to uh, give you, if your husband wants to give you something, that's that's thoughtful. But he does ask, did you want anything? Uh, do you want me to get you something? And um, to tell you the truth, after 
52 years of marriage. I don't need um, the kind of things. I don't need that, and I don't want uh, the I don't want the money spent. It's like Mr. Gibson said. Um, I don't want the money spent. That's what he said. <laughs> and I don't want to be too practical. But uh, if I did want something, I would ask for a tree or a bush or something that I could plant in the ground. Okay? So that's that's just the way it is. Um, and uh, I'm not trying to excuse it, but, you know, like I said before, character is a lot more important than the showiness of romance. Uh, romance is nice. For me, romance is making a pretty dress, which, of course, he appreciates. And uh, all the descendants and the men around me that are related to me, they all like it. And um, and for him, uh, romance is a nice meal. So that's what, that's what we do every day anyway. And being homeschoolers, we didn't have to have a special special anything because we cooked our meals every day they learned to prepare their food every day we dressed up every day so to us a, a time um, things like that are not um, special because every day is special to us like today is special because it's the beginning of uh, the love your home week <laughs> dress for your home week um, so these holidays that, that people have, they make a big deal out of, a lot of them aren't home most of the time. We were home most of the time. So we were always having some kind of, every meal was a celebration. We would learn new things to cook. And I especially like reading these and then showing it to one of the children or grandchildren. And say, would you like that? Should we do that? You want to try that? And uh, they'll look through it and say, oh, yeah, let's do that. And uh, then we will... Uh, decorate the table, cook the food, and or send Papa to the store for all the goodies, you know. Our grocery bill is very high, but I will tell you the reason, is we just don't buy anything that isn't fresh um, or organic, and so that's just the way it is. We decided a long time ago that while we might um, thrift on many other things, we would not thrift on, on food. And um, so that's the way it is, kids. And I hope that you got something out of today's lecture. And just be glad you didn't have to go anywhere. You got to stay home with your children. And you got to, you can pause this, go get a cup of tea, start it another time. And, uh, and I love your comments and your ideas. And um, I know people want me to talk about a, a lot of other things, um, but in general, I think everybody has to learn for themselves how their own home works better. I have thought of so many things that would make the mats work better, but it was built so long ago, and there's so many things uh, you know that just need to be upkeep is what it is. But if I had my own home, and you know those manufactured homes, I wouldn't mind having one that was new. I've never lived in a brand new home. Wouldn't that be fun, live in a brand new home in a kitchen no one has ever touched? And... Uh, have a bathtub no one's ever used before, but uh, if I had if I had to remodel it, I would not put the laundry room by the kitchen. You have to walk through the kitchen with all the dirty towels and laundry. I would uh, now I've got a system though. If I didn't want to do that, and someone was in the kitchen and there was cooking, I could go out the front door, go around to the back door come through the office, and then hit the utility room where the washing machine is and dump the laundry there, start the laundry, and then go back out. Uh, but I would put uh, the laundry facilities in other places rather than next to the kitchen. But in the old days, they just went where the pipes were. You know, since you've got kitchen water coming in, well, let's have the laundry room over here too. And then there are other things that aren't... Uh, that I would, would, would change, definitely. Um, I would put all bedrooms facing the backyard, not any bedrooms with windows facing the road. I just don't think, never felt comfortable with that. And um, I've got all, all kinds of other ideas, but I'm stuck with this, and I uh, often just paint pictures of houses. Or write stories to my grandchildren. We write stories back and forth that include houses and the descriptions of the houses. So there are many ways to be happy. So ladies, I hope that you uh, do well today. And even if you don't get a thing done, please get dressed up. 
um, and at least enjoy the day because you're alive <laughs> and uh, and stay close to Christ. And so I'll talk to you later. Thanks for everything you do uh, for me. And I just appreciate your support so much. Goodbye.